Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Judging Nerd <laughs> Culture. I'm Ollie. And I'm Jess. And today's a kind of an interesting episode. We're not doing a, just a singular review. Today we're doing a uh, 1v1, Hellboy vs. Hellboy. Uh, it's the newest incarnation of Hellboy from uh, the 2018 movie. Or did it come out this year or was it last year, do you think? I think it was this year. This year, 2019, Hellboy. Mm-hmm. And uh, the good old classic year Hellboy that I don't remember the name, the year of, so. You know, it was probably like 2007 or something. That sounds about right. So, uh, we watched both of these real recently, and it was fun, you know. Got a chance to uh, revisit some good old classic Hellboy and some new incarnation and see how they stacked up against each other. And, uh... You know, I don't really know how to super get into it, but I want to sort of just jump into, like, how they differed in the first, like, two minutes of the movie. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Let's jump into it. Hell yeah. Uh, So, Mm -hmm. like, they (laughs) the funny thing is that they both start off with, like, a here's what happened in the past voiceover that take two drastically different, like, tones and styles uh the older one was very serious in its in its tone as it was watching nazis perform some sort of demonic ritual to summon good old hellboy out here to participate in whatever you know nefarious deeds they desire and uh we we saw you know the inception of this character the start of the this backstory of who hellboy is where he came from and how his father got to know him or got him in his as to be his ward. Meanwhile, with the newer one, it was a little more goofy. <clears throat> yeah, it started even before the Nazis. Yeah. Um, it started with uh, King Arthur and it introduces the witch, um, Nimue. Um, and it it feels like it's trying to be a little more silly, a little more comedic. Um, it just, it really has a whole different feel to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, after in- introducing her, then it goes to the Nazis. Mm-hmm. Which also is really, like, the Nazi stuff is also weirdly silly. Yeah. Um, you'd expect that, at least, to be a little more serious, because that's where Hellboy was found, Mm -hmm. um, or how he came to be, and it, it just, real goofy, um, like, they have that, the lobster. Yeah, the Nazi punching superhero. Which was a little silly, I don't know if he's in the comics or not, but he just really, like, by putting him in there, it makes it just that much more goofy. Mm Mm-hmm. Whether he was in the comics or not, he probably shouldn't have been in any other incarnation of this franchise. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they, they just immediately start off with two very different tones. And uh, it's difficult because, like, Hellboy isn't as grim dark all the time. I haven't really read a whole lot of it, but it has its levity. It have has its humor. But <laughs> the newer one, it seems to really try to make that a focus mm-hmm. versus the older one in which most of the comedy and the humor came from the the fact that hellboy and all of his friends are so far disconnected from reality or from regular reality that it's kind of just ridiculous situations with even more ridiculous people yeah like sometimes they'll make a fun comment or like the the humor comes from them um but in a way that seems more natural like a regular person would do yeah but in the the newer one um the 2019 18 version whatever year it was um it's you can tell that it's kind of forced that yeah. it's trying to be comedic yeah like it's trying to make a joke mm-hmm. while like like one of the funniest parts in in the in the original ones i think is the entire interaction with hellboy his girlfriend and that guy that he's kind of jealous of his new caretaker uh myers yes because like the whole shtick is just hellboy's just being a dude who's jealous but Mm -hmm. when he's jealous this giant monstrosity 
it becomes a little more silly and a little more ridiculous. Like, <laughs> he starts stalking them, and it's not just regular stalking, it's jumping from rooftop to rooftop, <laughs> hanging out with a little kid, throwing rocks at this motherfucker. Like, it's things that seem almost normal, except they're not, and it's clear they're not. That's what, what makes it funny. Meanwhile, in the newer one, like... It was, I think they genuinely tried to just put in jokey jokes. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it worked in as quite as well. It didn't feel like it worked. <laughs> like, it's not it's not a bad movie. I wouldn't give it five stars. Um, That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> well, like one, one out of five. Okay, okay. Or one to five. Okay, okay. I was going on a scale of ten. Never no, mind. Like, <laughs> normally it's like a five star movie or whatever. You're right. Um... I w yeah, but yeah, I wouldn't give it a great score. Um, but the action scenes were kind of fun. Um, the characters were okay. Yeah, I don't think they were bad. Like I honestly, liked, I liked Alice the best. I think her power was really cool. I thought she was pretty cool, but it didn't explain who she was. No, that's another thing. So, uh. Along with the departure in tone in, in the original and the new one, uh, there's also more abrupt character trans introductions and sort of forces you to make assumptions regarding the character's <laughs> mm -hmm. relationships. Yeah, it doesn't let you... Um, it doesn't build that character. Mm -hmm. It just kind of throws them right in. So, like the original, where you're seeing the development of this character and you're slowly learning about them the other one is just oh this person's here now yeah and we don't know anything about them but they're part of the main cast now mm -hmm. i hate to say these words because it's, it's stupid and i hate this but it does like a real traditional like cinema sin of just telling rather than showing because with the original they showed the dad finding hellboy and establishing a relationship giving him the candy and sort of establishing like i'm gonna take care of this little tiny monster mm -hmm. yeah it, it, you could tell dad um i forget his name broom yeah professor broom um in the original you could really tell that he wanted to take care of hellboy that he yeah. had an emotional connection with him yeah there was genuine love in there it was, mm -hmm. it was real good stuff and while the new one it's like he says he loves them, and I'm, I guess he does, but it doesn't really feel as much. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It doesn't give anything towards the relationship. They mm -hmm. just, you know, he's there. You know, he has a dad. You know, it's you know Professor Broom, but they hardly talk, and when they do, they're always fighting. And I know some, in reality, some relationships are like that with your parents, and that sucks, but it's real. Um, <laughs> but in the movie, it's just very, mm -hmm. I don't know, not good. <laughs> yeah, like, they don't really ex explain why or what sort of dynamic has been shifted or what's been going wrong. With the original, they, they're also on tense terms once we actually get started into, like, the main plot of the show. But they sort of explain, like, ah, Hellboy got in trouble and his dad grounded him, which is the hilarious thing in general. And there's tension between them right now. And you can see that as the movie goes on, every time Hellboy does something that's a little, I don't know, showy or aggressive, you see his dad just like, I'm so disappointed in you with like his face, but it's never like an aggressive action. And then you can see that in Hellboy himself being, I'm so disappointed in myself for being my dad disappointed in me. Mm -hmm. While in the new one, it's like, Ah, my dad doesn't like me, and I hate him for it. And it's that at least that's what it feels like. Yeah. And that's not how I think it should come across. And it's not. I don't think that's how it's supposed to. Uh, and not just the dad. There's also like the lead, the other supporting leading characters. Uh, the the girlfriend of Hellboy, who's I don't know. Uh, Elizabeth. Right, Elizabeth. Don't literally the only reason I remember Hellboy's name is because it's Hellboy. <laughs> that's the only reason. Uh. But Elizabeth, like, her backstory and her relationship with Hellboy was not something that we really saw established on screen. But still, they managed to work it in more organically with just the first time you see Hellboy. He has tons of pictures of her just 
mm -hmm. in his room. You see him... He's already building up a relationship. Yeah, he's already pining over her, and you see that that dynamic starting even before you meet her. Mm -hmm. And then when you do, you see her like her solemn attitude towards everything and how she's, you know, not doesn't push away Hellboy, but it's just kind of like, I need to be do my own thing. And it immediately, like, grabs you. It's like, ah, they had something. Or at the very least, he likes her a lot, and they have a very strong but also strained connection. Meanwhile, the leading lady in the new one, who's really cool, don't get me wrong, she is really cool. But she just shows up, saves Hellboy somehow, and then she's just there. And she's like, hey, Hellboy, how's it going? Remember me? Blah, 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 blah. As if they've known each other forever. And they sort of have. Yeah, but, but like, there, there was no, for the audience, there was no, this is what happened mm -hmm. until almost the end of the movie. Yeah, which I understand that it maybe would have changed the flow to put that in earlier, but they, I think they would have been better to like start off the movie with, with her. Yeah. With, 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 with the scene where he's saving her. Mm -hmm. That way you establish uh, Hellboy's characterization of, I'm a hero, I do this, and mm -hmm. the job is this and that. And Like, they, they could have... They could have put the weird King Arthur scene in, and the Nazi scene in, and then went right to the, mm -hmm. the saving her scene. Yeah, because uh, originally, the way it starts off after those introduction pieces is you see Hellboy going to, I don't know, some place in Mexico or something to bring mm -hmm. back his old friend, and his old friend's a vampire, and then he kills him, and that's the end of that. And then there's nothing. It has nothing yeah. to do with anything else at all. There was absolutely no reason for him to go save his friend and have this whole fight scene. Um, the only possible reason they put it in was because fun action scene. You get to see him turn into like this giant bat and he tells him the end is near. But literally everyone else it says the end is near. So <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a bit perplexing to be honest mm -hmm. why this entire scene it's, is even there it's like they put it in just because they wanted to show how cool the bat was yeah and they could have just used him as an enemy i don't know man mm -hmm. but if they had replaced that with the introduction to this character and to show you know more of Her hellboy's personality with how he deals with regular people i think that would have been much more effective than what <laughs> than what they did do and then mm -hmm. he goes off in his because <clears throat> after that scene after the man bat stuff after he gets pick back up is when the story of this new one really kicks off and he starts his journey or whatever which he doesn't even know he's on this journey which is kind of a weird disconnect from the movie for me personally because the majority of the time it's like the characters don't know that all of the important plot things are even happening they're just mm -hmm. doing stuff that happens to be kind of in the same direction <laughs> and it's a little weird <laughs> Uh, but whatever. I, I feel like if it had started with the the kid in the back, what her backstory, and then moved straight on to that stuff, because as soon as it starts, he gets into some bad business and gets hurt, and she's the one that saves him. If it had started off with her and then moved right into that, it would have made much much more sense. It, once they explain, yeah. and hey, it's me, this girl. And they could have, uh, after that, after that scene where she saves him. And he realizes it's her that saved him. Then his dad could have been like, hey, you need to go get your friend who's in Mexico. And then they could have went together and maybe had more a more bonding part of the movie where you get to see their relationship. Mm -hmm. A little more screen time for her in general because she is pretty interesting. Yeah. And it would explain... It could have explained her powers a little better and how long she's had them and what she's been through and how they actually met and everything. Mm -hmm. um, it could have also worked as a different way to introduce their, ver their uh, I don't know, replacement for Abe, Were Leopard yeah. man. <laughs> he, I mean, he's cool. And I whenever I think of something as a wear anything... Like, a werewolf is really cool, and it's, I've always thought they've, they've been really cool. Like, if I could be a vampire or a werewolf, I'd be a werewolf, because who the heck wants to be a vampire? Hands down, but, same. But whenever 
like my mom, <laughs> she's read <laughs> a bunch of books. She loves supernatural books. And she'll tell me about, oh, this character in this book is a were-leopard. This person is a were-lizard. This person is a were-bear. This person is a, a were- I don't know. Dinosaur. I don't know. Something <laughs> stupid. Um, were velociraptor But it's just every... They any get animal other than a were werewolf sounds it's weird just, it's always so weird but when they introduced him you knew he was going to be something because he had the scar on his face and he was taking some weird medicine mm-hmm. that was like real shady yeah not that anyone was, was going to judge him seemingly but just that he was fe- mm-hmm. feeling shady about it yeah so you, so you knew he was going to be something mm-hmm. as, especially because he was real like sassy and salty towards uh hellboy and you're like oh he's mad at monsters because he is a monster Mm -hmm. um and then he turns into a were leopard and it wasn't as bad as i thought it was gonna be it was kind of cool um the idea of being able to jump all around and be real quick and is fun it's really cool yeah no it was fun to watch his character was... was just just there you know how a lot of people a lot of characters have like a big old stick up their ass like that's a character trope for a lot of things this character is the stick up someone's ass Mm -hmm. like it was just so stiff and boring Mm -hmm. and even even when he tells alice his backstory of how he became a were leopard it's real lackluster and it doesn't really show anything it doesn't it doesn't really give him any more character or, like, any more depth or anything. Because he's just, like, blank when he's telling her this. Yeah, it's just this brief aside of just like, ah, I fought in a war. And then it wasn't a war. It was a hunting ground for a leopard man. Ah. All my friends died except for me. And then you're like, oh. <laughs> yep, that yeah. makes sense. Okay. What's weird is that you had friends. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it's like the characters themselves aren't the worst. Admittedly, we were just ragging on this guy, but he's not actually awful. No, he's it's a, just he's a good actor, and yeah. was, the character is fun enough. It's just there's not much to the character. Mm-hmm. It would have been nice to see him do something else or be mm-hmm. a little more. Definitely, and that's the thing, because like he acted the character really well. It's just that the character it's, themselves was kind of like one or two notes at best, mm-hmm. where they could have been so much more interesting. Like, maybe being a were leopard, the war that he went to was the Vietnam War. And being of Asian descent, he could have, I don't know, opinions, thoughts, comments, anything. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah. Um, my favorite part was, I mean, like, there was a couple favorite parts. But one of the bigger parts, I guess, was, um, the end and I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that because, yes, it ended. But no, no, no. it's because they in- finally introduced Abe. <laughs> oh, you're talking head. about the last two seconds yeah, of the, the movie. Yeah, the last two seconds of the movie where they finally introduced <laughs> Abe. And it's all mysterious and everything. It's just because it's not even that great of a scene. It just got me really excited because it's Abe. Mm-hmm. And I thought they were going to show him and like talk to him for a second. But no, it's just they go up to this, I don't know. It's not a canister, but, like, this tube filled with water or, like, kind of greenish, I think. Um, it literally looks like the canister in the shape of water. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> same universe. Um, but they go up to it, and you know they're going to see Abe. So you're really excited because he's one of the best characters in the original. And then it's just his hand. And yeah. for a second, for a second, you're like, oh, my God, yes. And then... Nothing. You have to set up the sequel that it's never going to get, mm-hmm. but you have to set it up. It's just really unfortunate that Abe was a setup. Yeah. Um, and who knows if it's going to get a sequel? <laughs> I d- Because it's not that great. I also but it don't, could save itself. I also don't think it made a lot of money. Yeah. Um, probably not. But a lot of movies, sometimes, the first one's kind of sucky and then the second one's better because Mm. they've learned (laughs) (laughs) yeah honestly i'm gonna probably in the editing throw up a number here or no one or two numbers here to show how much it cost to make it and how much it made and if that number if the resulting number is positive there might be a sequel if it's negative there's definitely not gonna be a sequel yeah Uh, um but yeah like what you were saying abe was such a like surprise to see him at the very end that it, like, was really exciting to maybe hope 
for another movie, then maybe it could be a little better. Because Abe is really fucking cool. Uh, that's the thing with the first the first movie in its in its entirety. All of the supporting characters are really fun. I don't remember any of their names, but they're all great. Mm -hmm. Aside from Abe and Liz and Hellboy and Myers and Myers now and Broom. The, that's the dad, Broom. Yeah. But there's uh, also and Clay. Yeah, the hair plugs man. They're all really cool, mm -hmm. and like they all seem so rich and varied and full of life. When, uh, spoiler, Clay dies, I felt bad, even though the character had only been on screen, like, four times. Mm -hmm. That's because somehow they've already established a really deep connection between him and Hellboy, and you know Hellboy, like, absolutely loves this guy. Yeah. So it was really, like, their relationship was real sweet. It's just like, I'm gonna take care of you, Hellboy. I know you're, like, 68 years old, but, like, I'm here for you. Mm -hmm. And they talk about the fact that they're both bald, and it's, it's funny, and it's sweet. Mm -hmm. And then he dies. Yeah, and in, in the newer one, he doesn't really have any friends, other than the one that he fights in Mexico, and it doesn't give a flashback of them, it doesn't do anything. It just, he gets there... The guy's in a, like, full head-to-toe luchador. luchador costume, and then, so you don't you don't know it's him or anything until he calls Hellboy up into the ring, and then they fight. Yeah. And there's no feeling at all. It's just, here, here's another fight scene, yeah. and then when he dies, Hellboy feels kind of bad, it looks like, but he doesn't feel like... I mean, like he's like he's crying or feeling upset or something, but it doesn't really have any impact. Mm -hmm. It's not like okay, thanks for letting us know that he was an important character to you. Yeah, in the end of the fight. Yeah, <laughs> but it, again, it was all words. Mm -hmm. There was no depiction. There was no showing, just telling, and that's not enough to establish a relationship mm -hmm. on screen, at least. Yeah. So yeah, it's just if we're if we're going head to head. Introductions, Hellboy the original outclassed it. Uh, supporting characters, again, the original severely outclassed the yeah. new one. Um, I, I know the original, the screenplay um, and the monsters and everything was done by... Um, Guillermo del Toro? Yes. It was also Guillermo. directed by him. Yes. Too. Um, and then the new one, I don't think it was done by the same guy. I don't think it was done by Toro. I think it, it was... was I, I don't know who it was, but I know that uh, Del Toro really wanted to do a third Hellboy installment, uh, and the the main act the actor for Hellboy I forgot his name right now he was one hundred percent on board, uh, but for some reason they didn't give it to Del Toro, mm -hmm. so they dropped out as well, and well, yeah. that's why we got this entirely new uh, reboot rather than a continuation. I'm I'm trying to find right now. I'm trying to find who. Who directed it? Okay. It says, the director is Neil Marshall, and the writers are Andrew Cosby and Mike something. Mike Mignola. Um, I don't know who those no, people are. Uh, Mike Mignola is the writer of the... Of Hellboy? Of Hellboy, okay. the comic book. So that's probably just something else. Um, well, they have to give him writing credit. So the director, I guess he, he's done Dog Soldiers, The Descent, Doomsday... Tales of Halloween, Lost in Space, the 2018 version, um, Westworld, that sort of thing. Hannibal, 2015, Constantine, the 2014. And a the few, TV show? And a few Game of Thrones episodes. Yes, the TV shows. <laughs> um, so, like, some of those were pretty are pretty good movies, or pretty good TV sure. shows. So you'd think this would also be pretty okay, but it was it was just, like, mediocre. And you, like, wish there was more to it. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't go see it in theater. <laughs> <laughs> no. Which, luckily, you can't anymore. So. Yeah. <laughs> but here's the thing. Uh, I didn't hear... I'm not... wasn't familiar, obviously, with all of them. But it didn't sound like he's had a whole lot of, of movie experience. Mm hmm And, obviously, there's a massive difference between movie and television. In that television, you have 30-minute periods over, like, years mm -hmm. to establish an entire story arc and all these characters, all these things. And yeah. I, it's possible that, you know, switching from one medium to the other 
limits your ability to do is yeah. you have to try like, and cut here and there and that might have not gone so well in this instance yeah and like it sounds like i like i'm not sure if any of the other things he's done has been an adaption of anything but since this was an adaption from a comic and from a previous movie maybe he was just having a hard time squeezing it all in but also making it good and also in his own style um but like I'll give him a chance. Like, maybe if he does number two, it'll be better. Or maybe we'll get somebody else to do it. I don't know. Um, but yeah. hopefully they just do a number three of... <laughs> <laughs> of the original? Of the original. Oh, God. I would bleed for that. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the, the the new one did have some merits. Mm -hmm. uh, the visuals of it, aside from Hellboy, were amazing. Yeah. Um, I really liked the Giants. The Giants were fun. They were a lot um, of fun. I would like eventually for them, not specifically Hellboy, but like movie makers in general, to depict Giants as not like bloodthirsty, bone-crunching morons, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like Ella Enchanted. Why can't they just be... <laughs> Lovely, big <laughs> people. Yes. They just want love too. <laughs> Uh, just real dapper, massive people. Yes. <laughs> I like that. But, no, these these ones were gross, disgusting people chewers. Yeah. But they looked really cool. They were done really well. Yeah. That's our cat again. Mabel can't make a decision. Um, I really like the, the Batman. <laughs> the, um, Man the vampire guy in the beginning that was in Mexico. He was really cool. It was, it was basically just a werebat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not really a vampire. <laughs> vampire. Um, but I think that was really cool when uh, he started transforming. Oh. It was pointless, but it was really cool. <laughs> Very cool to look at. Uh, a lot of the enemy monsters were all really interesting. Uh, the Baba Yaga was terrifying to look at. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was awful. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of um, when we watched... Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. It reminded me of the... Dangling? K K G Jangling Man? Jangly Man, yeah. Mm. Especially the way she moved. And she didn't break apart and come back together, but she twisted her body around in circles and in different ways she shouldn't have been able to. Mm -hmm. and yeah, it was good. Uh, it was also really gross. Her entire arena, uh, her set piece was disgusting. And well, yeah, of, like, the Baba dead, Yaga. <laughs> dead children and stuff. Yeah, but, like, this is definitely one of the more unpleasant depictions of her, as yeah. far as I can tell. Yes. Um, I don't know much about the Baba Yaga. Um, all I know is that I think she's Russian, and she travels in her house. Her house has chicken legs, and nice. she runs around in that. The original House Moving Castle. Mm -hmm. I love it. And you do, I think, if like, she gives you almost impossible quests to do like challenges before she'll help you do something i'm not sure that could just be from a book i read and not in <laughs> reality but yeah it's it sounds about right it seems like it would be the uh the kind of thing mm -hmm. this <clears throat> mythos would have you do uh but yeah she was real cool looking and so were you know a lot of the other enemies in general uh near the very end of the movie when the horrible apocalyptic nonsense has already occurred you see just wild disgusting monstrosities rampaging for a brief moment and they're all really cool mm -hmm. like they're all really interesting to look at uh they're, they're not really too important to what happens mm -hmm. they're just kind of there for a moment but they're really interesting they're really fun uh and yeah that's pretty much the be the the big the biggest highlight for me is just the appearance of many of the of the monsters and a lot of the uh animation for them it looks really well done mm -hmm. uh as well as uh the fight scenes were really good they're really well choreographed they and they had good music oh yeah it had it, really good music in it it was bobbin yeah um <laughs> and i'm not trying to get down on the actors like it's not their fault they didn't write the script yeah um, no like david the... harbour and ron perlman are fantastic actors both of them oh for sure um it's just, you know, everybody's got to have that one movie that's just kind of <laughs> maybe doesn't do so well. And that's okay. Yeah, it happens. 
And uh, the thing, too, is that, one, Ron Perlman's Hellboy was spectacular. And this time around, it's not like he couldn't do a good Hellboy. I think this actor... Oh, yeah, he did He did a pretty good Hellboy. It's just the way Hellboy was written. Yeah, it's he not... Did, the... He did a good job for how he was written. Yeah, he did a good version of... the. He did the best he could with this version of Hellboy. But it just wasn't the best version mm -hmm. to begin he with. Was, I know Hellboy's supposed to be angry. And he's supposed to be angsty. Excuse me. But in the 2019 version, he just seemed... <sighs> He seemed angry in a way that there was nothing behind his anger. Like, there was no reason for him to really be angry. Yeah. But Ron Perlman, when he played Hellboy, when he was angry, it was like, oh, yeah, he's angry because yada, 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 yada. Mm -hmm. Like, you you know he has these emotions for a reason. And the other one just kind of like, oh, he's just... It's just who he and, is. Yeah, he's just an angry person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I did really like... Um, the 2019 version of Hellboy, when he's in his, like, full form, when he has the, the horns up and the crown in the middle. I know that the original also does that, um, but it's harder to see the crown. It just looks like a bunch of fire, fire there, which is also cool, but... I'll, uh, the crown makes it really cool, the like... The crown does make it cool. <laughs> um, you can see the crown a little bit in the older one for a second. Mm-hmm. But, I don't know, I, I like the the idea of the crown, like, just fire in the shape of a crown, mm -hmm. instead of a crown on fire. Yeah, and here's the thing. the These two stories, they, they are not in any way telling the same story. Uh, the, the one that the newer Hellboy tells uh, is he's trying to stop an evil witch from coming back and releasing the hell spawn on Earth. In which uh, the original was Hellboy was trying to stop ancient Rasputin, Rasputin Nazi <laughs> from opening a gate, allowing eldritch nightmares to enter our our planet. Mm -hmm. And similar in context of like evil person trying to let evil things do evil things to people, but very different in their establishment of like here are the are the players, here's who's evil, who's bad. Here's the stakes. Mm -hmm. Where uh, with the the newer one, it was like, ah, when this happens, it'll be very bad. People are going to die. But it's still like, it's, I don't know, smaller scale seeming. While the other one, when they started to unleash everything, it felt like, oh God, the earth is going to get eaten alive mm -hmm. by these giant squids. So like, similar stories, but very different, I don't know, scale and impact and despite that you know the older ones seem to have a little more impact to it the moment in which Hellboy becomes his like penultimate form with the horns almost wasn't as big a deal as it was in the newer one mm -hmm. which uh, I'll have to give it to it in, in the newer one they, they made that really impactful of the few things that it did really well this was one of them because uh his whole shtick was trying to get Excalibur so he could kill the witch and blah 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 and uh, a whole big deal about that was that doing so meant like knowing that he could bring on the apocalypse and it ended up being almost as about as close to an emotional moment as you can get in, the, in this particular movie mm -hmm. but uh other, other than that I don't know it, it looked cool and it was almost emotional but it, I still seemed to kind of fall, out, fall flat, even though? Yeah, um, coming out of the movie, we didn't go to the theater seeing it, no. but, um, after watching it, it just felt like, not a waste of time, but like, I probably could have done something better, or watched <laughs> something better. Yeah. Um. And then we did a few days later. Yeah, um, and we'll <laughs> talk about that later. Um, but do you want to talk about the villains for a minute? About how um, Nimue is, she's cool. Um, her actress, I, her name escapes me right now. Um, but she's the, the woman who plays in Resident Evil. She's Alice. Um, uh, Mila... 
jo- Jovovich? Mila Kunis? No. <laughs> that would have been amazing. <laughs> amazing. And then Ashton Kutcher could play Hellboy. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> what, what, um, what horrifying thing is this? Give us some fan art of that. Um, but no, um, how Mila playing Nimue is kind of... She's not really that big of a bad guy. Yeah. Like, she she's pretty powerful. Um... I think she's pretty cool, like, being able to put her essence, her lifeblood, into this tree, and then, after she gets all hacked up, still be alive, and in, like, millions of years later, she's able to, you know, come back and be as beautiful and as healthy as she ever was. (laughs) Um, I think that's really cool. Um, Her entire shtick is really interesting. Yeah, but... Her purpose, even though it does mean a lot of death and destruction, she really just wants monsters and humans to live in the same world. Um, she's just really angry because humans have been killing monsters for forever. Um, and really, they just want to have the same... They want to have equal equal rights as humans. <laughs> and uh. um, it. she just didn't seem that evil she was just going about her yeah. her business in a bad way yeah she admittedly maybe this wasn't the intended response we were supposed to have but that is how it seemed like it, maybe you know monsters not the best to be fair yeah but still the way they framed it it was just like ah these monsters they want the ability to live here and do things mm-hmm. and she wants to help them rather than help the humans so she got cut up into tiny pieces, put in boxes, and scattered across the world. So when she comes back, she's like, I'm very angry. And that makes sense to me. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. I, I sympathize with her a lot. <laughs> Especially when she... There's, there's a point in the movie where she gives a speech to a bunch of monsters and goblins and fairies and w- trolls and whatever else. And she's telling them, like, this is our time. Humans have been killing us. We need to do something about it, basically. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah. yeah. You know what? Yeah, I'm on your side. <laughs> Screw those humans. Like, yeah, kill us way, all. Let's do it. <laughs> um, uh, there's also the, the, the pig man, who's yeah. pretty neat. He's really cool. Um, He's ugly. Oh, yeah. But um, he's the reason Hellboy and Alice know each other. Um, She was a chain changeling or rather he was a changeling yeah he was a changeling she was and, uh, just there yeah um so a changeling is when a troll or a fairy or something what, a creature <laughs> <laughs> basically repla- steals. yes st- steals the baby and replaces it with itself um mm-hmm. in disguise as your child um and when hellboy figures that out and he makes the changing changeling leave and makes the fairies bring back Alice. It so happens that it creates kind of a tough life for this fairy who has now, instead of being able to grow up as a human and have a regular normal human life like he wanted, has to live his life as a fairy, a pig looking guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it it really got me when it, he was just like, I just wanted to live a good life. Mm-hmm. I would have been a great daughter. And I'm just like, huh. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. He's just really sad. And it's been building up for all this time. <laughs> and now he's just he's just angry. Yeah, honestly, his his entire motivation had more, I don't know, impact to it than a lot of the things that it were going really on. It was really sad. <laughs> uh, he was so close to having that perfect life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then Rasputin. He just seemed more evil. Well, I mean, okay, let's, right off the bat, right off the bat, said it right that time, he's a Nazi. So yeah. immediately. Like, if if you come to me and you're like, hey, I'm a witch, I'm like, cool. cool. <laughs> um, if, if you're a Nazi, I'm like, hmm. It's time that's, to punch you in the face. I'm going to get my witch friend and we're going to beat you up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And so, like, immediately, one is, <clears throat> at very worst, a neutral figure, and the other one immediately an evil bastard Mm -hmm. and then they start doing their actions and her actions i want these people to have the power to live here in the world yeah 
That's not that bad. Are they going to eat people? Yes. Okay, that's kind of bad. But the, the the purpose, the idea behind it is equality. Yeah. That's not horrible. Freedom. <laughs> uh, Rasputin, I want to unleash, unleash the oldest monstrosities to ever exist in the universe because there's nothing. There's yeah. nothing good about that. He's a that. Nazi. Nothing is ever good about a Nazi. <laughs> um, huh. maybe, like, like you said, maybe... Nimue was supposed to be more intimidating. Maybe they meant her to come off as a little more evil. Um, it, but she she's really just not. And <laughs> Rasputin, he... I mean, he's Rasputin. Uh, it's a stupid name. Um, <laughs> so he doesn't seem like he'd be that intimidating. But he... I don't know. He's just, you know... He's a Nazi. He's like, has this ancient power inside of him. He is like cold-blooded and was, is going to kill anything and anyone who gets in his way of doing what he wants. Mm-hmm. And it's just, Nimue just comes off as just an angry woman wanting... <laughs> wanting equality. Wanting her, yeah, wanting her, her and her monster buddies to be able to do whatever they want without being murdered. <laughs> yeah. And now she's going to murder everyone else because they're being jerks. And I know, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Another thing, the supporting villains are also, you know, pretty interesting on both sides, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like I said with the pig man, he's a cool character in whatever, you know, context he's in with this, with the fact that he's a villain. He's this monstrosity who, you know, was gonna kidnap someone's child and replace them. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, his entire motivation is, I wanted to live that life. I wanted to be that child for that family. Yeah. He would have given them love. He would have bitten their supporter child regardless and that's really interesting that's a complex thing yeah i felt more emotions for him than i did a lot of the other characters Mm -hmm. and he's supposed to be a bad guy (laughs) who's you know killing a bunch of monks and stuff but he just i don't know he just seemed really sad and he didn't have like a physical actor it was like a voice actor but they did a really good job excuse me in like just (sighs) grabbing that sadness Mm-hmm. Uh, meanwhile, in the old one, the villains, gosh, they were just gruesome mm-hmm. to some extent. The uh, the main, like, day-to-day antagonist, the one who was really wrecking everything for everyone, the one who murdered the most amount of good guys, mm-hmm. was the human zombie automata man with the bladed tonfa. Yeah. And, like, he was just super intimidating and really elegant super cool (laughs) yes always with these like metallic gimp masks or whatever Mm -hmm. and this chest crank that he would turn on to power himself up and start slashing and dashing people yeah so like on one hand a sympathetic villain which is not i don't think what they wanted (laughs) or what was yeah you don't want to like a nazi (laughs) (laughs) so (laughs) on the other hand just badass evil people Mm -hmm. like that's intimidating that's something that you want yours to see your your out your heroes overcome something that you know is by some extent cool but evil yeah because it's a movie exactly if you're watching a movie you don't want the villains to just be lame yeah like you want them to have cool powers um going up against the hero's cool powers Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, on the other one, I just, I didn't want Hellboy to beat up the pig man. Yeah, I I didn't. I didn't want that at all. I kind of wanted Nimue and Hellboy to get together because Elizabeth <laughs> wasn't even in this movie. Um, and El- or Alice and Hellboy definitely weren't going to get together because she, she was like 18. Yeah, she seemed a little young. Yeah. Um, so if they do have a sequel, they'll definitely introduce Abe. He'll probably be in the very beginning, I feel like, because mm-hmm. they ended the movie that way. Um, and possibly they'll either have Elizabeth be introduced and Hellboy meet her, or they'll just throw her in and you'll be like, oh yeah, this is Elizabeth. (laughs) Yeah. I talked, we talked a little bit about Elizabeth, but we didn't really talk a whole lot about Abe other than he's really cool. Yeah. And I wanted to mention that, like, he really is a wonderful highlight of the original movie, Mm -hmm. because, like... One, the premise behind him being this empathic fish man. So on one hand, he understands everyone and their feelings and can 
literally connect with them on that emotional level. Mm -hmm. But then on the other hand, he's a, to some, grotesque fish man <laughs> and is shunned by anyone who would otherwise make a connection. And that's not even a thing that's stated in the show or in the movie. It's just a fact that you know because you see him and you see what he does. Yeah. So it's He's like so ugh. cool. They did such a good job making him. Mm -hmm. the, the visualization of him is amazing. Mm -hmm. The makeup, ugh. yeah. Uh, um, the guy who plays him also plays the fish in, um, Shape of Water. Shape of Water. Doug Jones. He is really good at playing fishmen. <laughs> no, yeah, fishmen. <laughs> um, at just creatures. Mm -hmm. Um, Shape of Water. He was in Pan's Labyrinth. He was the guy with the weird hands. Yeah, the um, thing about him is he has just an incredible ability to, like, have a presence mm -hmm. without speaking. Like, Abe obviously was a talking character, and that did a lot. Like, his words were important, his words were impactful, and the way he delivered them was great. But more than any delivery of lines was the way he walked and held himself and his, like, physical mannerisms with his hands. Mm -hmm. He was always just kind of, I don't know, stroking something, but not in a weird way, in a... This is how I connect with things, and I'm yeah. just trying to understand the world around He's me. He's so... very good at using his whole body to act. Mm -hmm. Like he doesn't just use his face or his voice; he uses every part of his body. Mm -hmm. um, fun fact: He was also Billy Butcherson in um, Hocus Pocus. Oh, uh, I don't remember who that is. The Scarecrow guy, oh, or okay. the dead guy, whatever, the zombie. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Abe. Damn good job. The actor, impeccable. Yeah. Um, if they ever do a movie about me, I want him to play me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good casting. It would good probably job. be impeccable. It would be in impeccable. I would be weirdly that. tall and lanky. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, anyone who watches it who knew you would be like, you know, it didn't look like her, but it felt like her. <laughs> exactly. They can have somebody else do the voice if they have to, but... <laughs> it would be great. Uh, so yeah, just wanted to, you know, Pat, since we're going through all the supporting characters, I wanted to make sure we actually stopped and talked about him because I know we talked about him for like a brief second, but he deserves a, a solid minute in, mm -hmm. in the recording. Uh, Liz got her, her moment. Uh, we we want to say anything more about her because she also was pretty great. I'm um, sure, yeah. Um, I'm just so wondering. So she's played by Selma Blair, um, who is... A fantastic actress. Um, so Elizabeth has firepower. Um, guns? One, uh, guns? It's also called firepower. It was a word joke. It was a dumb pun. It was dumb. Um, <laughs> so one of the things that, or one of the thoughts I had, I guess, when I was watching the original Hellboy was when she uses her powers none of her clothes get burnt <laughs> she's <laughs> it's like a i guess more of a magical fire than it is like an actual fire mm -hmm. which makes sense um but i i told ollie like what if you were a superhero or super villain um and you had this fire power like fire starter except when you lit yourself on fire like that, you know, full body flames, you know, um, what if it burnt your clothes up and it also hurt really bad because it's fire? <laughs> like, I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, in Firestarter, in that old, what is it, like 1980 something Drew Barrymore movie, whatever, where she has the fire powers, um, she has like a, an immunity to fire because you know it's her fire and she is just has the fire power so she's immune to it but what if you weren't what if you were not immune to the power that you had um that would be a really shitty day it'd be like <laughs> um you know what the in i think it's the invisible guy oh no um it's the TV show that we watch where I think it's Matt Walmer who plays the character. Um, they're like superheroes. The one guy's Brendan Fraser and he's a robot. Oh. What's that called? Uh, yeah. 
Doom Patrol. Doom Patrol, yeah. It it basically like Doom Patrol, where you're the that nuclear guy. Negative uh, man? No, that's not right. That's from Spider Man. I can't remember blanking on his name right now. I don't know. But basically, you're just gonna be a burn victim and have to wear bandages all the time because it's your re- fire power is fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I mean you can get like bandages, dip them in something that's fire resistant and, you know, go to town. <laughs> but only for a little while. Uh but uh, yeah, uh, her power, the, the fact that it had only effects on other things and not her or anything that was touching her was a little weird. Yeah. Um, when her and uh, Hellboy kissed in the end and they both just lit up into flames, I thought to myself, it's a really good thing that her and Myers didn't actually get together and that she didn't actually like him that way because if if she had and she had gotten like i don't know very passionate or too passionate and accidentally lit herself on fire she would kill the man so what you're saying is that when she gets you know heated up she really literally well why else would she have i don't know maybe gotten a flame when she kissed hellboy maybe her and hellboy like it like that maybe they're a little weird i guess it's not that weird but i guess (laughs) But yeah, it's I I do like that idea in general of just like ah, she's horny now she's on fire. That's really funny to me. Well, not like horny, but you know, just Passionate. full of emotion. Fair enough. Fair enough. True. There's a difference. There's a big difference, and yours sounds a lot nicer than mine and a lot more romantic. Cause I'm more romantic. Hogwash. This isn't gonna make it into the video, but I'm the more romantic one, and you know it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Her powers are a big part of, like, also what characterizes her as a outcast. In that, you know, she's afraid to be with anyone. Like you were saying, with Myers, if she at any point made out with him, was like, Ooh, this is the best, I love you, and then lit him on fire, like, fuck. And this is awful. So, like, it does. it goes a long way in immediately showing how alone she is in the world. Aside from Hellboy and Abe, the only people who she can have a connection with without being afraid of killing them. And that's that's neat. That's really powerful. Uh, I do still appreciate that of everyone else, despite, you know, her powers and the disconnect from the rest of the world, she's still the most normal person. Mm-hmm. Like, she still sees all of the weird stuff that's like, this is weird, guys. Yeah. And she still fits in in a regular world, too. Mm-hmm. Other than randomly setting herself on fire. Yeah. Um, do you want to go into self-promo? Um, sure. Let's do one more thing, though. I want to talk about... Uh, before we do that, because uh, after that we can probably wrap it up. There's two very important deaths in both movies. In both movies, the father dies, and in the fir- in the new one, it's not that big a deal. No, um, Hellboy doesn't seem as distraught. Yeah. Because the relationship again, it doesn't seem like it was that close, and they just seem angry at each other. And there is a point where they're like, "Oh, I was the way I was because it it was the only way I knew how to raise you, and this is just." This is just how I am. And it was kind of like, that's lame and stupid and dumb. (laughs) Yeah. Just because you're angry doesn't mean you have to raise your child to be angry. (laughs) Yeah. It's also, like, in in the new one, that was the motivation for him finally picking up Excalibur Mm -hmm. and deciding to do this big thing, even though it might ruin the world. And it didn't feel like that would have been enough of a motivation. No, it doesn't. It, because they didn't have a close relationship. Exactly. At the very early on in the movie with, I think it was Baba Yaga maybe, gave a prophecy of someone he loves dearly is going to die. And I really hoped that it was going to be the witch. That they were going to fall in love and then he was going to have to kill her. And that would have been really interesting. Mm-hmm. But instead it was the dad and it didn't feel like he did love him that yeah. much. And I think if it would have even been Alice, it would have been more emotional than if it were his dad. Yeah, because then it would have been like his little sister died, and that would have been mm-hmm. pretty sad. Yeah. Um, and then 
Alice brings his dad back for a minute with the ectoplasm nonsense. Yeah, and he it's a just, pretty cool power, though. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's cool. And Dad and Hellboy have a, a moment, and that's how Hellboy realizes, oh, I shouldn't do this. But It still sounded more like he was being scolded by his dad, so he was like, oh, okay, I'll stop. Yeah, it's... it just... <sighs> it could have been better. It, it could have been... I hoped it would have been better. <laughs> yeah, it's sad, because, like, I really like Hellboy, the original... And I like the idea of the comics. I haven't really had the chance to read them because they're kind of uh, vast. But the general concept I've always been a really big fan of. Mm -hmm. So when this movie was coming out and I saw that it was the guy who plays Harper on Stranger Things, I was like, Hopper. Hopper. Harper? That was my bad. I was close. I just screwed <laughs> up the word. And it was the guy who plays Hopper. I was like, ah, this guy's a pretty darn decent actor. I'm mm -hmm. excited to see him play Hellboy. And it was kind of not... It was not what I had hoped. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, overall. Yes. Number the new, the new one is not the worst. Don't get me wrong. There are worse movies out there. There are worse movies to waste your time on. It just wasn't that good, though. Compared to the original. And the original is a really great movie. And uh, I know that the past few reviews... We've been very much on a sort of nostalgia train, mm -hmm. but in all honesty, we're not very nostalgia driven. I'm very much a new is probably going to end up being a little bit better because of technology and social development and all so many other things and reasons to cause newer iterations to be more technically or in other ways impressive. But this one just wasn't. No, it wasn't. Um, it could have been. Like you said earlier, like a lot of the animation was really good. A lot of the fight scenes were really good. The costuming and the makeup, whatever, was really good. It was just written poorly. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it always comes down to the writing. Like you can have a great set of actors, you can have a great source material, but if you don't write the scenes... With any sort of weight, it's not gonna hit anyone. It's not gonna do well. Mm -hmm. If they do have a sequel, mm -hmm. I think because David Harbour is playing uh, Hellboy. That's what got me. His last name's Harbour and he plays Hopper and I mixed those words together <laughs> and that's not on me. I think me. Winona Ryder should play Elizabeth. That would be amazing, actually. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that'd be good. That'd be fun. Then they could be in Stranger Things, and Hellboy together, and it's Winona Ryder, so she would obviously make the movie ten times better just by being there. <laughs> so, uh, who should play Abe? The same guy? No, uh, Finn <laughs> Wolfhard. Uh, <laughs> 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 or no, um, Joe Keery, the guy who plays Steve. <laughs> So we're just taking all of the, yeah. all of the <laughs> cast from Stranger Things and throwing them into Hellboy. I, I can live with that. I can or dig it. Or the kid who plays Dustin. Gatton Matarazzo? Ma Matarazzo? Uh, that'd be fun. That'd be so funny. <laughs> that'd be good. Um, I think that's about all I have to say about it. That's all I gotta say on the matter myself. And I, I feel like I've been, I'm, I have been really negative. Negative Nancy about it. But it's a good movie, like, well, it's a good enough movie to watch if you like a good fight scene, if you like monsters. Um, not a good movie if you like plot, <laughs> <laughs> if you like a good story. <laughs> um, like, if you want to just turn it on in the background and once in a while look over and be like, oh, that's cool. Um, cool. Yeah. I mean, it'll be there. It's pretty cheap on YouTube. That's the best recommendation I can give it, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, meanwhile, the original, definitely see it. If you somehow haven't, watch it. It is an incredibly fun movie. Mm -hmm. So, one to five stars. I'd give it, really, only like a two and a half. Yeah. I wanted to give it three, and but I'm not that's all, like... That's all Pig Boy and Nimue. <laughs> <laughs> that's all Pig Boy and Nimue. And Alice. Alice is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. We didn't really talk about her stuff, but, like, she had neat powers. Yeah, she's she just psychic. Yeah. She's able to punch 
a soul out of a zombie. I don't know. Yeah, I I, I liked her whole. I don't know. I'm a 21st century psychic. Look at me, angst. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. Still not enough because I I'm, I agree. It's gonna be a like a 2.5, three if I'm drunk. Yeah. Meanwhile, Hellboy, the original. I'm going. Real good. You should go watch that if you like monsters and if you like plot. 4.5. Great. 4.5? Yeah. The original? Yeah. That's everything we got for this uh, for this particular episode. Yeah. All right. We'll be uh, talking about It 2 in the future. It Chapter um, 2. Boom. Some other nifty things coming out soon, so stay with us. Stay tuned. Mm-hmm. There'll be some games coming out in the near future that I'm definitely going to play and maybe we'll be able to talk about. We definitely need to talk about Cyberpunk. But first, we have to play it. <laughs> yes, that's that's how that usually goes. <laughs> no, yeah. we're just gonna have a whole episode based on how excited we are about to play it. Mm-hmm. We're only gonna talk about the trailers for Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. There are a, there, there are those out there. <laughs> oh, there are there are hour long videos about the trailer with Keanu Reeves in it. Yeah. <laughs> like if you weren't excited to play it. You are now, because Keanu's in it. <laughs> Keanu! My boy! Uh, Alright, thanks you for watching. Uh, you know, usual Patreon stuff. I'm not going to get into all the nitty-gritty, because uh, we're already running over an hour. But go to our Patreon if you're willing to support us. Any amount helps. And if you go looking through the through the different tiers, you'll see that we're going to try and give stuff back to you. It's not just, you know, nothing. We'll, we'll do what we can to earn those bucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to talk to us, you can email at us. Uh, you'll find our email on any of our social medias. Uh, you can also just go to Facebook uh, at, uh, at Delta Cryptid Productions. You can find us on Facebook or at Cryptid Delta. You can find us on Twitter. You can find us on Instagram at Cryptid, uh, Delta Cryptid Productions again. Uh, basically, just Google those words and you'll find us one way or another. Yes. It's a very Googleable t- name. <laughs> and if you can't um, give us all of your money... That's okay. We understand. Um, <laughs> give us all but if you could go over to iTunes and give us a rating, hopefully a five star rating, <laughs> not a two point <laughs> five or a four point five, but five stars, um, that would be fantastic because that helps us a lot um, to yeah. get noticed. So yeah. it makes it so that people who haven't seen us yet will will pop up on their suggestions and other things like that. So that's a massive help. Even if that's if you if you can get anyone to do that with you, that would be just the best. Uh, all right, yeah. I I really enjoyed doing this and it's been a lot of fun. So uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. We love you.